when you hear the words, I can't breathe, a few things will come to mind. George Floyd. Systemic racism. We can breathe. Police brutality. Protests. Black Lives Matter. The words I can't breathe are just as literal for many patients in Eastern Cape Hospital as it was for George Floyd. They literally can't breathe. They are so understaffed and under-equipped that there aren't enough ventilators for everyone and patients are literally fighting each other for ventilators. They are fighting for air. They are fighting to breathe. The South African government love to say that they stand with Black Lives Matter. Well, why aren't they standing with their own people? I thought that was what the initial three weeks of lockdown was for. To prepare our health services. You've had three months to do something and you've done nothing. Oh, I'm lying. The Eastern Cape Health Department did manage to buy us a uh, hundred scooters with prams attached to it. So in essence, we can take you to the hospital, but we won't be helping you when you get there. According to Christine Ortiz from the Daily Maverick, SA launches first coronavirus vaccine trial while Eastern Cape Healthcare buckles under the pressure. It is expected that the COVID cases in Nelson Mandela Bay will double in the next 10 days as hospitals in the city resorted to implementing emergency plans from Monday. All private hospitals have stopped non-urgent surgeries and admissions with some bringing in staff from other provinces. The Provincial Department of Health says the steady increase in infection in the metro is driven by poor adherence to, pre to precautionary measures such as washing hands, wearing a mask in public and keeping to physical distancing guidelines. The province's testing backlog has been reduced and tests have a turnaround time of between 48 and 72 hours, so 2 to 3 days, as opposed to up to 21 days last month. The first phase of a field hospital sponsored by the German government is due to open in the city on Tuesday. Well, it's already Wednesday where I'm at, so let's have a quick look. The Daily Maverick also reported that on the 1st July 2020, this is Wednesday, 1 July 2020, the Port Elizabeth Field Hospital is still not open. So we are already a day late. The week after Field Hospital providing an additional 1,485 beds to Nelson Mandela Bay was handed over to the Eastern Cape Department of Health. The facility is still not ready to accept patients. Right, a few hundred of the field, of the field hospital's beds are equipped to provide oxygen to patients. The department's Deputy Director General for Clinical Services, Dr. Letha Matewane, did not respond to questions about an opening date. Now, it was reported a week ago that this hospital would be opening on the 30th of June. The opening date was already announced. Health spokesperson Siswe Kupelo said it was a work in progress. No, it's supposed to be finished. I thought it was handed over already. There's no use in buying more time. What's interesting about this whole field hospital not being ready? What happened to those three weeks that we were initially locked down for? Why did we go into lockdown in those first three weeks back in March? Wasn't that to get the healthcare system ready? Wasn't that so that the healthcare system would not be overwhelmed? I just don't understand what they've been doing these last three months except for buying useless scooters that's going to be rusty in a few months or stolen or sold for parts i don't know what they're going to do with it but yeah a week ago you said it would be open at this time i would expect this field hospital to have been open long ago an advertisement for 314 posts at the field hospital was published on friday 26 june with the closing date of friday 3 july the bulk of the vacancies are for nurses and nursing assistants, while several are for doctors, radiographers, pharmacists and operational managers. Advertised 26 June. So it was advertised less than a week ago. They advertised these positions that should have been filled four days later on the 30th of June on the Friday. So they advertise it on a Friday. They say the hospital would be open on the next Tuesday and then they say no, the next Friday is when 
the applications were closed. What have they been doing for the last three months? What is going on? Mawiani said they now want to build a field hospital for each district and also for Buffalo City. To do what? For it just to stand empty? For it to be handed over and nobody's taking care of patients? Mawiani said the province had awarded 42 contracts worth 222 0.8 million to Eastern Cape contract for refurbishment of 34 health facilities across the province for COVID-19 purpose. Okay, so we need to ask the question. Of those 42 contracts and of the 222.8 million rand that was given for these contracts, how much of it will actually be used in the Eastern Cape province to provide patients with adequate health care? How much is going to go missing? How much is going to get stolen? These projects are currently at various stages of implementation, with 20 projects having already been completed. 12 projects plan to be completed at the end of July 2020, with the completion of the remaining 10 projects earmarked for the end of August 2020. So that leaves him with another two months to make that 222.8 million magically disappeared. Last week, Mabayani said 40 nurses and 5 doctors had been appointed at the Port Elizabeth Field Hospital, but it is understood that the facility needs at least 12 doctors. Okay, so let's do some quick math here. We've got a field hospital with 1,400 or so beds and 40 nurses taking care of these people. That leaves you with about 35 patients per nurse. That is absolutely ridiculous. It's, not, it's impossible. You cannot expect that to work five doctors five doctors for 1400 beds now beds and patients are a whole different thing what about the patients that come in and leave you want 12 doctors so that means one doctor for about a hundred or so patients at one time that's just the beds come on let's get serious for a second guys your 40 nurses and five doctors cannot take care of all these people on their own while you wait to appoint more it is safe to say that the field hospital will set the trend for a change in our healthcare solution. What healthcare solutions? The ANC government have not provided many healthcare solutions and no, scooter ambulances are not a healthcare solution. It is totally paperless and is customized for the Eastern Cape. So, totally paperless? How long before someone needs to be admitted or needs to receive care and there's no record of this person or the system is down how many of you have tried phoning a state hospital or phoning the department of home affairs or any government institution for that matter you spend so long waiting and then when they actually help you or can help you or respond to your call they tell you the system is offline they end off by saying at this stage it remains unclear when the facility will begin to accept patients. Just to remind you, first phase of a field hospital sponsored by the German government is due to open in the city on Tuesday. Now, this was Tuesday, 30 June, according to this article by the Daily Maverick on the 24th of June. So this was last week, Wednesday, and they said it would be open by Tuesday. And nothing. Right, the Cape Argus said on 29 June, pregnant moms placed in danger by being abandoned at Eastern Cape hospitals. Right, let's see. The Eastern Cape Health Department has condemned the behavior of health professionals for abandoning patients in maternity wards at Dora and Ginza Hospital in PE and Freria Hospital in East London. This comes after pictures and videos of patients sleeping in the corridors in the maternity ward were shared online over the weekend. There you go, there you can see the tweet, expected moms lying on the floor some without a blanket you can see this lady doesn't even have it doesn't seem to have a blanket or sleeping on any pillows capello said while their grievances were being addressed including deploying more staff to ease the pressure on them abandoning patients was unacceptable as health professionals had taken oath seas were also condemned a video of a pupil in isolation at makaula senior secondary school in, in Kwabata caught riding a bed trolley up and down the facility. So it's absolutely shambolic what's going on in the Eastern Cape Hospital. You have field hospitals that are not being used. You have pregnant moms sleeping in the corridors or passage on a cold floor. No bedding, nothing. Right, as stated earlier when I quoted the popular phrase, I can't breathe. Let's look at this City Press article by Suzanne Fenter on 28 June. Eastern Cape Healthcare has collapsed. 
Sikh people are fighting each other. Right, the Eastern Cape healthcare system has collapsed, say doctors and healthcare workers who are employed in the province. We are sitting with a situation where patients are lying in the corridors of hospitals like Livingston in PE and are dying and there may soon be a similar situation at Dora Nginza in Zwide, the doctor told City Press's sister publication. Rapport. Many of them need oxygen, but there is not enough for everyone. Those without oxygen are fighting those who do have it to try to steal it. Sick people are fighting each other. Listen to what I'm saying. Sick people are literally fighting each other for oxygen. Survival of the fittest. Now, another doctor said the maternity unit at Dora and Ginza Hospital was close to collapse. There are not enough hands to care for everyone. These poor people, we feel so sorry for their families because nobody can enter the hospital. So there are no witnesses to what is really going on, except us medical personnel. No wonder you have medical personnel striking. No wonder you have doctors and nurses refusing to come to work. Not only have they not been supplied with the correct personal protection equipment, these are the things they have to witness on a daily basis. And you can condemn it as much as you want because these people swore an oath. I would hope that with the next election that our politicians will swear an oath to actually deliver on the promises they make. An oath doesn't make you superhuman. An oath will not protect you from the coronavirus. This doctor goes on to say, Families have no idea what their loved ones are really going through. There is not a single healthcare worker will ever be the same after this thing. We are emotionally broken. They spoke to the report on condition of anonymity, fearing being fired for speaking out. Now, as silly as this sounds, and as little as the Eastern Cape Health Department can afford to fire this doctor, they probably will do it. They said nothing had come of the promises made by the Eastern Cape Department of Health. Weeks ago, the department pledged to appoint more personnel, but nothing has happened. The same went for its promise to avail staff for additional personal protective equipment. Nothing's happened. There are only two state ambulances currently servicing the whole of Port Elizabeth. In addition, there is a major shortage of basic medical necessities such as adult nappies. Well, two state ambulances and a hundred scooter ambulances. And as if that is not enough, one has to put in effort and keep fighting to get anything done, said the doctors. Even simple things like arranging an ambulance to take a patient from one hospital to another takes hours. By Wednesday, there were already 49 patients in Port Elizabeth who required admission to intensive care units or ICUs, but there were only 35 beds available. That includes both the public and private sector. We are now sitting with a situation in which ICU beds will be out will have to be made available by request. But what's interesting is, you look at the end, Siswe Kupelu, spokesperson for the Eastern Cape Health Department said he was unaware of the aforementioned problems in hospitals and that nobody had spoken to him about it. Now he's just the spokesperson, so I can't really blame him. What this means is that the situation in the Eastern Cape is just being ignored by the department. They are either sweeping it under the rug or they are unaware because they just don't give a shit about what happens to the patients and what happens to the people. But come voting day, they will make a lot of promises about how they will improve the situation. But until then, you can sleep on the floor, you can fight people for oxygen and you can wait hours for an ambulance to transport you. In an open letter published on the 30th of June, a doctor in an Eastern Cape hospital tells exactly what's going on. Two weeks ago already things were bad at the Livingston Hospital in PE. They weren't collecting the waste. No one was cleaning and the nurses were also striking because they felt the working conditions were not safe. Even the kitchen wasn't working. We had to port patients, we had to mop the floors, it was very very bad. The smell was even worse. Now the doctor says, one freezing night I took a 70 year old lady into the ward. I was pushing her in a wheelchair. It was absolutely freezing. There were no sheets. Just these disposable paper things that they wrap around the surgical sets in the theater. So basically, kitchen towel, essentially. She got on the bed and this poor old woman gave me such a pitiful look. It was so cold and there wasn't even a sheet to cover her. 
there was just a piece of paper on the bed. A 70 year old woman who is sick and she's in a hospital and she gets covered with a piece of paper. It's so bad that a local priest donated 100 blankets. Luckily the laundry has started working again. Before, one of the consultants was taking laundry home in bags in his car and washing them at his house. We felt that that was not okay because the drapes were contaminated with blood and pus and whatever else. This doctor goes on to say, for example today, in a ward where there are more than 45 patients, only one nurse is on duty. It's impossible for one person to manage that workload. That's how people get burnout. Then this doctor also says, I've taken the approach that I'm trying to find small things I can actually change and improve, like giving out blankets. And it has made my experience better because I don't feel as guilty when I see patients shivering in their beds. What I can't do anything about is the rats running around the passages. Rats in a hospital. We all know that that's an animal that carries so many bacteria and diseases and they are running around in the passages of a hospital. I can't eradicate all the rats, I can't remove all the medical waste in the hospital, but I can keep my small area clean and it's made me a lot more positive about the whole situation. The author is a medical doctor in the Eastern Cape on the front line of the, of the fight against COVID-19. I just want you to have a quick look at this video on News24 where the condition at the Livingston Hospital is being shown for all to see. The thing that really struck me today was one patient with a broken arm pushing another patient with a broken leg in a wheelchair because there are no porters and there are no assistants to help them. Um, and you know it's incredible how the kindness of people comes out in such dire situations. But another thing that really sort of touched me was just the general filth in a hospital where you expect that you can eat off the floor, you know, because it needs to be so, so clean and the, the standard operating procedures of infection control are clearly not successful because there's dirt everywhere. And yet you have these passionate, passionate people who continue to work in such dire circumstances. And that brings us to our word on the street. Hi, I'm Murray from Sesame Street and I'm looking for the word on the street. What's the word on the street? Shambolic. Shambolic. Adjective. Confused and badly organized. Used in a sentence. Things are often a bit shambolic at the beginning of the school year. Or, Anna is far too shambolic to be able to run a business. Or, the situation in Eastern Cape Hospital can only be described as absolutely fucking shambolic. What was the point of having a lockdown? What was the point of those first three weeks where several Ramaphosa said on live television that we will use that time to prepare our healthcare services for the coming infections that we are going to be facing? How many people have been ruined financially? How many people have lost their jobs? How many people are getting infected now and will lose their lives due to this virus? And it's becoming more and more clear that nothing was done to prepare us for this. Nothing was done to provide relief for the citizens of the country. How is it possible that hospitals still look the way they do? How is it possible that you have rats running around in a hospital and people fighting each other for ventilators? But you take so much pride in providing useless scooters with a sidecar next to it. Again. I said it at the beginning of the video, we'll use those scooters to get you to a hospital. But once you get there, there won't be sheets, the kitchens are closed, the nurses aren't working and those who are can't cope with all of you. If you get a sheet, you better hope you get a clean one. The Eastern Cape Health Department should be ashamed of themselves. As usual, this is part of a greater discussion. If you feel you have anything to add to the discussion, feel free to comment down below. If you liked the video, if you found it informative or entertaining, click on the like button and please subscribe to my channel for more upcoming videos. And as usual, stay beefy.